not right. We had to polish the f out of it. <laughs> wow, that's going so well. Hi there, my name is Caitlin, and this is my channel, The DIY Nurse. I'm an emergency room nurse here in Canada, and I'm teaching myself DIY in my free time. I'm far from perfect, and I'm still figuring stuff out, um, but maybe we can learn something together. So, today, we are redoing the side table. Um, we've had this forever. I want to completely sand down the top and restain it and paint the body. So, I got all my supplies, and let's just jump right into it. So we're back out on the balcony, uh, mostly because we're going to be sanding down the side table and I don't want to get all that dust in my apartment. <laughs> I did that once with our bedroom furniture and it was just terrible. So something we're going to be using that I didn't mention in the supplies is we're going to be using a orbital sander. So this is my orbital sander, it's Milwaukee. Um, I honestly haven't owned a different type of electric sander. I know there's the square ones and the round ones. Um, I've heard the orbital one doesn't leave marks on your wood, so that's why I went with that. Um, it worked well for a bedroom set, so that's what I'm gonna be using. Um, I'm gonna be using a mix of 60 grit and 120 grit with this sander, and then I'm gonna go in manually and sand it with my hands. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do is actually I'm going to remove the top of the side table so that I can just get right into everything and sand everything down, stain it, paint it, no hassle. So let's do it. So when you're using an orbital sander, you don't want to start it away from your project. You want to start it on the project so that speeds up on the project. Because if you go from this to this, the sander might jump and it might nick your project. So you don't want that.
So I did the first layer with the 60 grit and now we're gonna switch over to the 120 and kind of smooth it out a little bit. So another thing about the Oracle sander that's nice is you get these pads and basically you line up some of the holes on it and it will actually suck it through these holes and into this little catch so it actually doesn't spit out as much um, uh, dust as some other sanders so that's kind of nice. And we'll get to work on this. So for the drawer and the body we don't have to get all of the stain off we just want to rough it up so that the paint will stick to it. And like I said before, it doesn't have to be perfect because we just want to rough it up so that the paint will stick. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. Well, I think we're done. At least we're done this part. <laughs> Okay, so now that we're done all of our sanding, we're gonna get to staining. So I've given this a wipe down and gotten all of the little bits of wood off of it. So now we're gonna stain. Uh, the stain we're using is called Special Walnut. It's a really nice kind of medium tone kind of stain. Um, I use this for our bed set as well and I just really loved it. Um, so when you're doing stain, what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a stain sponge and we're gonna saturate one part of the sponge and we're going to kind of wipe it with the grain because you want it to kind of go into the grain. All right, let's get started. So using the stain sponge is really nice because it holds a lot of the stain so you can spread it around a lot more easily than if you use something like a brush. Okay, now that we're done our first layer, we'll let this dry, and while it's drying, we'll start painting. So my husband had a good idea about um, maybe staining this centerpiece here as well. So we're going to stain this part and then we're going to paint the rest of the line. And it's alright if you get some on the legs because we're going to paint those anyways. So that's why I'm going to stain first because the paint will cover the stain a lot easier than the stain will cover the paint. Okay, so we're gonna let all of our stain dry and then we're gonna come back and do a second coat and then we're gonna paint. So the paint I got is called Oregano Spice. 
and I got it in eggshell so it'll have a little bit of a sheen to it. Okay, so we're all done. We're done painting and staining. Um, we've done two layers of paint and two layers of stain. Um, the last steps are to reassemble it and to spray it down with a clear coat uh, finish, like a varnish to kind of protect it. Um, we have to let the stain soak in for at least, I believe it's eight hours or so um, before we can seal it. So that's gonna be a tomorrow project. So we'll be going on to day three of this project. Um, but yeah, I'll reassemble it tonight and I will just let it uh, sit overnight. Okay, so this is where we're at. Um, I've reassembled it. Um, the last step is just to seal it. Uh, but I came across one other issue. The handle I got for the drawer is just a little bit too wide um, to the point where if we tried to drill, like fill our current holes and drill new ones, um, they were, it would just be too close so the wood would probably just give out. Um, so I'm just gonna go with using the old hardware, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash it up and give it a bit of a shine and hopefully it'll look nice, who knows? <laughs> Okay, it is a new day and the first step we're going to be doing today is we're going to be trying to polish our old hardware. So I have no idea what kind of metal this is. Um, so we're going to use a generic recipe that will polish brass, copper, and uh, bronze. That was the other one. Um, we'll give it our best shot. These are pretty, pretty old. Um, but I found this recipe online. It calls for a tablespoon of flour, a tablespoon of salt, and a tablespoon of vinegar. just to smear it on with a damp cloth. So I have a damp shop towel here. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, it's definitely doing something. Okay, and our next step is to go rinse it and buff it out and I'll show you the results. We had to polish the fuck out of it. <laughs> okay, that's not a good way to it. And there we are. It took a lot of polishing and I had to use some steel wool, but there's this beautiful gold under there. Well, not gold, but some sort of gold metal. <laughs> I still don't know what kind of metal, so if you know, let me know. But yeah, this is gonna look gorgeous on our new side table. So I'm really excited to see it on there. Okay, it's a new day, and we are going to do the final step of our project, and we're going to seal uh, the stain of the paint. So I'm using the Verathane uh, Professional Clear Finish in satin. Um, it kind of gives it a nice little sheen without being too shiny.
So this is touch dry in minutes, um, but I'm gonna give it a little bit of time to set in and then I'm gonna do a second coat. And that's it, we're all done. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe or leave a comment if you have any questions. Um, if you didn't enjoy the video, I hope you at least learned something because I definitely did. <laughs> we're here for a good time, so let's keep having a good time.